Our love affair with sugar. We look at its health effects and what it would be like to give it up. I'm Afan Chaudhry. Welcome to Globe Now. If you've got a sweet tooth, you're not alone. A StatsCan report from 2004 found that on average, Canadians consumed 110 grams of sugar a day, the equivalent of 26 teaspoons. But it can lead to health problems, diabetes, heart disease and obesity. And there is growing concern that the food industry is part of the problem. Well, joining us now is Dr. Yoni Friedhoff, a medical doctor focusing on obesity. He's also behind the blog Weighty Matters, where he posts regularly on nutrition, health and sugar. We've reached him in Ottawa. Welcome, Dr. Friedhoff. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, you argue that the food industry is not our friend. What is the one example that drives that home for you? Well, I think it's easy enough just to walk down a cereal aisle in a supermarket. So you walk down the cereal aisle and you'll see that what is placed at child eye level are cartoon characters on boxes of sugary cereal, where those very boxes are festooned with health claims. They talk about the whole grain content of the cereal, they might talk about vitamin D levels, but this is a sugary delivery vehicle that is specifically and explicitly targeting our children. Friends don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, friends try to protect the kids. We don't try to uh, coerce them into eating stuff that's not good for them under the banner of health. What, what is the most surprising place where you found added sugar in food products? Well, so it is everywhere. The, the estimate is about 80% of food products will have added sugars in. Some people are very surprised by the amount that is added to savory things like tomato sauce. Um, I'm more amazed when it's not specified as added sugar. So if you go down the supermarket aisle that has the snacks for kids in lunches, and you walk through the fruit gummy aisle and the fruit leather aisle, you'll find all sorts of products that literally say no added sugar, but if you put them on a scale, they are by weight 80% sugar. That's fascinating, and that's a labeling issue with Health Canada. Food industry is, in fact, labeling it properly, because in Canada, if once upon a time it was related to a fruit, you are still allowed to say you didn't add sugar to it. So what tips do you offer you know, ordinary Canadians if they want to reduce their sugar intake? Well, so the most obvious, although it's trite, uh, tip is to cook more. So the fact of the matter is the vast majority of the salt and sugar that we are consuming in our diets is coming from sugars and salts added to processed and restaurant foods. So the easiest thing to do if a person's very concerned, you don't even have to read a label, is try to get away from the products and get more towards the produce. Remembering that mixing a jar of something with a box of something isn't actually cooking. You have to take fresh whole ingredients and transform them into meals. Uh, but the other thing to remember, and it's an easy thing to remember, four grams of sugar is a teaspoon. So when you pull something off the shelf and you look at the back of the label and it says, oh, this little thing of yogurt you're supposed to give your kid with their lunch has 24 grams of sugar in it, well, that's six teaspoons. And you've got to ask, is this a really a helpful thing? Could something containing six teaspoons in a tiny little package be healthful? Probably not. What's another tip? Well, so at the end of the day, the, there is going to be a transformation, we're hoping, in food labels. Right now, it'll just say sugar's total. You've got to remember that there are sort of safe upper limits. And so right now, we don't know what those are. If you look at the Nutrition Fact panel as it stands now, there's a percentage, but it doesn't actually tell you what you're targeting for. So figure that the World Health Organization is suggesting that roughly we should be having at most uh, five to ten teaspoons of sugar per day. D Doctor, what about people who say sugar is addictive, toxic, and should be given up altogether? What do you think of that? There's a lot of things that if we gave them up altogether would be more healthy. Um, the fact of the matter is, though, it's a pleasure in our lives. Mm. I think suggesting that people should or could give it up totally might be a bit uh, overreaching. Ultimately, the goal is the smallest amount of sugar a person needs to like their life. As far as addiction goes, there are some interesting studies, but I think that it would be premature to really describe sugar as an addictive uh, vehicle. Interesting. Uh, I do think, however, that when we, accustomate, when we accustomize our palates to sugar, we expect more sugar. And so kids who are growing up on you know, highly sweet juices and bars and cookies and uh, candies and all that sort of stuff, they might not enjoy fruit as much as a consequence of the fact that their palates are expecting huge blasts of sweet. And so de-sweetifying our palates as a whole is something we should all be striving to do. Okay, Dr. Friedhoff, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we want to hear from you. How important is it for you to cut back on sugar from your diet? What has worked for you? Tweet us at Globe Now. So, 
Here's a personal story about someone who decided to cut out refined sugar from his diet completely. Jason Holborn lives in Toronto and he has been sugar-free, he says, since October 2012. We caught up with him recently and he talked about the trick that keeps him going. I used to pour at least a half cup of sugar on my cereal in the morning. And that cereal would be Frosted Flakes or it would be um, Cocoa Pebbles or something like that. I used to take a cup of sugar every day and mix it with a cup of butter and eat it. You're used to making your bad feelings go away a certain way. Now you have to come up with something different. Because you know, I like to keep a picture of Ryan Felipe on the beach inside my cover as a reminder of how I want to look. <laughs> I tried a lot of gimmicks to give up sugar. I finally had a different idea for a different gimmick, which is to uh, post the number of days I could live without eating refined sugar out on my window. It used to be so easy on the run if you were hungry to go grab a donut, just go grab a, a fruit explosion muffin. It used to be so easy to uh, pop in anywhere and, and pick up something to uh, satisfy your, your, your hunger cravings. I have, to, uh, I have to plan ahead more now, I have to cook more, because I really do not want to come home and uh, have to reset my window. It's a big psychological impetus for me. I have a lot, a lot fewer emotional ups and downs throughout the day. I never anticipated that, but a lot of people on the internet who have given up sugar report the exact same thing. Processed food is really geared and engineered to make you want more. Um, that's why they say that you can't have just one. What I have learned is that anybody who wants to accomplish anything in life, whether it's including something in your lifestyle or excluding something from your lifestyle, tell everybody about it. Tell your grandma, tell your dog, or post a sign out in your front lawn. Tell everybody, share your goals with everybody. It makes you more accountable. For more on the debate around sugar consumption, keep an eye out for Saturday's edition of The Globe and Mail. We have an interview with the federal health minister, Rona Ambrose, and a close look at Canada's sugar strategy and how it stacks up against other countries. So do check it out. Well, that's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. What are the challenges you face in trying to control the sugar intake within your family? Tweet us at Globe Now. I'm Afan Jodhri. Thanks for watching.